good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And welcome to Sawspot. Uh, beautiful day. Today, you know, the last uh, few days actually have been uh, very nice. Uh, I'm hoping to, to enjoy uh, the weather on Sunday. It's supposed to go to about 60 here in uh, Philadelphia. And I think that'll be a good day for me to wax my car. Uh, try to wax the car at least twice per season, which prevents me from having to uh, work harder to get some of the residue of the days off of the car. Traveling, you, you tend to get the bug sap, tree sap, all that stuff falling onto the car. So uh, if you kind of buff it up uh, every every couple of uh, times during the course of the season, you have less labor on the car. And the paint lasts a lot longer. And you find that even when the car gets dirty, its appearance is not as bad. For those of us who like to have our cars looking like a brand new printed penny. Today, uh, we're going to be talking about the emotional and psychological trauma of parental separation. And oftentimes, we don't even believe that we've been traumatized by the parting of ways from the partner, let alone the parting of ways from our children. We don't even think about trauma in that capacity. And studies even show that some of the most commonly overlooked causes of emotional and psychological trauma, uh, one of the things that's on that list is uh, parental separation and the breakup of a significant relationship. It's overlooked because what we tend to do is we do this false sense of healing. We tend to go on into a enter into a new relationship before we are even out of the failed relationship because we already know it's failing. So for men, I, I can't really speak to women, but for men, men tend to set up shop elsewhere when they see the the signs of a current failing relationship. Because one of the things that we tend to do as, as males is uh, throughout through our conditioning we have learned to take things on the chin. Uh, we have learned to um, address matters but when we address them we tend to address them angrily and usually we're addressing them angrily because we come to the point of not feeling like you are hearing us as a, 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 a woman. Um, so, and, and that's with anybody who is, uh, I would say, uh, communicatively compromised. Meaning that I have said what I feel in every way that I am capable of saying it, but you still seem to not be hearing me. Or I'm still coming away from our discuss it, um, excuse me, our discussions with the same outcomes and that is not the desired outcome. The desired outcome is for us to find some resolve with the situation that I'm bringing to you but it seems to all be turning out in the same way. So uh, anger for most men is the most commonly used defense uh, against hurt feelings because to tell you that I'm hurt is difficult. I've not been groomed to do that. So to tell you that you hurt my feelings or what you said uh, saddened me, uh, using those kind of words uh, is not part of most of our makeup. That's not, and we don't just get that from the male figures in our families. We get that a lot from women. Either our mothers, aunts, nieces, whoever, we get that a lot from females. A lot. And if you don't believe that, take a look at yourself. Look at what you as a female says to the males in your family regarding relationships with other women, failing relationships, failed relationships, 
Look at look at the dialogue. As males from other males, we're typically told, "Yo, bro, just go ahead. It's another one." A rabbit's supposed to have more than one hole. You know that kind of language. We need to stop giving to um, our children, especially the, that information going to our males. We need to stop giving them that information. So when it comes to a point of a relationship having already failed, we are, in most cases, as males, already in a new one. Already in a new one. Dragging that baggage along. Dragging that hurt along. From the, from the one relationship that, that is failing into the new relationship. And wondering why that new relationship becomes in the same condition as the previously failed relationship and most of the times it has to do with we haven't allowed ourselves to heal. Now I'm only speaking to the trauma of failed relationships. I haven't even begun to talk about the trauma from childhood. From childhood. Now some would say well everybody's childhood uh, did not um, necessarily have traumatic events. Well, you don't know how each child is affected by different events that transpire throughout the course of their lives, especially as a child. You don't know. As children, children internalize things you have to remember from an unlearned mind. They internalize things from their heart. Which is why they are so they are so resilient when things happen and because of their resiliency we tend to minimize the impact that our separation or our conflicts have had upon the child but what we have to understand is uh, children internalize things from the heart because uh, they are born we are all born unscathed of societal ills we haven't developed perceptions and ideas and of the like about the world um, until we get to a certain age and that's where the influence from our homes come into play children see conflicts within a relationship and they begin to internalize that to the heart the mind protects them from uh, the happenings in the environment by suppressing it the, 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 the beauty of the human being is so minimized we protect ourselves in spite of ourselves because that's by, by design but what happens is a child sees things happening and begins to react to the circumstances from the heart Where, which means that they will cry when mommy and daddy argue why? because they love mommy and daddy why? because they are dependent upon mommy and daddy's love they're dependent upon that physical touch they are dependent upon the communication the dialogue they're dependent upon us for every aspect of life even beyond certain ages think about it if you have still have a relationship with your parents Think about the dependency that you have between you and your parent or parents. Think about it. Children have the same level of dependency and theirs is more intense because of the, the relationship to their natural order of development and our responsibility to that natural order of development, the connection, the chromosomal relationship, the DNA, all those things are significant to why the relationship between both parents is so significant to the child. This is, listen, we have to understand that this this relationship is much deeper than we can intellectualize. We try to intellectualize an understanding of the relationship between human beings. And we can't do that. We are slighting our creation when we do that. 
there is a, an, an, an undying uh, passion for us as human beings to connect with another human being. And it's even more prevalent when it comes to our own child. Understanding that each parent has made the contribution to this child. With the blessing of the Creator, it comes into existence. It comes into existence. So, when we look at trauma, we have to look at trauma a lot deeper than that which we have formulated in our small minds. And this is not, I'm not saying that in a disrespectful manner. I'm saying that you have to understand the significance of that which we make insignificant. And we're so selfish in our actions towards one another and we put the child between us and we fight our battles on the back, on the emotions, on the psyche of the children and we're killing our children. So by the time a child comes into pre-adolescence, into adolescence, into adulthood, they are so deeply damaged by our stuff and then we place all these expectations on them, unrealistic ones in most cases, as they continue to age, they have not developed enough to deal with things in a much more mature manner because they have been deprived of understanding and learning independence because they have been dependent upon us and we have been failing them in so many areas that they are totally confused and they draw from so many uh, other sources around them that they are confused about even their own identity even their own identity so when we talk about trauma we have to look at it from the perspective of my own life what about my own life have I uh, uh, entered into this equation that is impeding my ability to reach my child in order for my child to begin to come into independence can my child really depend on me can they really? Beyond the provisions of shelter, food, clothing, can I, am I capable of providing for my child? Protecting. Protecting uh, the child does not necessarily mean just physically being able to fend off any intrusions upon them. There's a, also a, a means of being able to protect a child psychologically. When we fail to educate ourselves on matters relevant to uh, successful child rearing, we are then relying upon that which is in our minds based on our own experience. How successful have you been with that? Or as Dr. Phil says, so tell me how, how that's working for you. Again, I want to remind everyone that we parent in two ways. We either do that which has been done for or to us by our parents, or we don't do that which we dislike about what was done, said, or not to us by our parents. We, we look at things differently as we begin to age. But aging is one thing, maturing is another. So if I am aging but not maturing, that means I am getting older and still haven't learned anything new because I'm not allowing a new idea to be grafted onto my mind because it's closed. If I am aging and maturing, that means that the aging process has, has afforded me the opportunity to have experienced some things throughout these courses 
and the maturing process means that I begin to learn to understand how these things affected my life and how they affect the lives of others. So I don't have to experience everything in life in order to be able to give the information to my children and understanding how this may affect their lives and providing them with some concrete evidence because that's another piece to it. But the other educative piece that I want to speak to has to do with you continuing your education. If you dropped out of high school, for instance, and although you have gotten a job and you, you pretty much can take care of the family, you know, monetarily, how far can you go in that job? Can you get another job? Upward mobility, is that possible for you? When you uh, accept uh, mediocrity, and now, again, I don't say this in a disrespectful manner, but when you accept this is enough, then why would your child want to exceed their position? of just getting, for instance, uh, a C or a D, just making it through the class to just be able to be, a, be able to obtain the degree or whatever, whatever the certificate is being offered. They do that based on uh, what they see us do. But if they see you not even returning back to school, but making the effort to learn how to read, to take some reading classes, to take some form of uh, uh, educational uh, 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 courses to help you advance in different areas so you can improve in the workplace. Uh, there's also a matter of you learning from the child. Sitting down doing homework with a child and you have some uh, and you're compromised uh, 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 in some areas of math, sciences, whatever the subject matter may be, because I'm totally, look, you start talking about math, I'm totally c uh, confused. I got wiped out by a math course in college on at least four different occasions because I had to retake it over and over again because I just couldn't grasp the concept of using the method. I I'd rather use my mind to come up with a solution because in algebra, I can come up with a solution, but following the steps and demonstrating that I could follow the steps was part of my problem. But I say all this to say that if we are just providing the minimal provisions to the development of our children, hence this is why we see so many of the issues that we see today with our children not wanting to do beyond that which is what they, they currently do. You set, you settle for it, for it. That's what you settle for. And even if you settle for that for yourself, having dialogue with them about the necessity of them reaching higher than you is important. Helping them to understand why it is that you settled there. Don't just tell a child that they need to do better when you haven't tried to do it. You need to tell them what your impediments were. And your need to just get a job and to just maintain may have been the conditioning that was given to you by your parent. And even though you may not see that area of um, your shortcoming as being a traumatic experience and how you deal with the, tra the, the trauma of not having been afforded by your own parents the opportunity to learn, to advance because they didn't push you because they were limited, that was still a level of trauma for you. Because when you sit down at the end of the day and you see all these young folk come in to the workplace who are exceeding you, who are moving up the ladder quicker than you because they come in with these documents that you know make them eligible to apply for the position and they get the position because they meet those eligibility requirements and you just don't meet eligibility requirements, it's, it's, you feel that to your heart. You feel that, but you mask it. See, when we talk about trauma, we have to always go back to our own conditioning first and foremost before anything else. So when we enter into a relationship and that relationship is failing,
we, re we, we, we regress back to when previous relationships failed. Because many times we have good relationships with good people. And instead of us taking ownership for the relationship failing, having to do with some condition of our own, we will automatically blame the other person. We will, be, we will put ourselves in the victim role and make the other person feel bad about who they are. And the reality of it is, it's a, it's a situation where these are two good people in an unhealthy circumstance that no matter what you do, if you're not working on becoming healthy as an individual, together you will never make it. So that's the significance of couples therapy, which is a whole different discussion. But when we separate from someone who we really care about, it is devastating. It is devastating. When we sit down and talk to that person, many times we don't talk about, especially as males, we don't talk about how hurt we are at this loss. Because it's a loss. It's a loss. I loved you at one time. You loved me at one time. What happened? And a lot of times you'll find out that it happened before the failure happened. That it happened before we established this relationship. That it happened on our first date but we turned a blind eye to whatever that circumstance was because we thought maybe it would go away or maybe we could change it or maybe if I did more of this or less of that, that it wouldn't happen as much. So we have to look back. And when we begin to talk about solutions, that's one of the things that is going to be first on my list to talk about is we first have to establish an, a, a opportunity, a moment because timing is everything and you have to know when that moment arises for you to open the door for dialogue about what happened and here's what I always uh, I use now I, I haven't always used it but I use now when I'm doing my classes my trainings and my groups I tell people to write this down and I want you to write it down because every interaction should have this theme. Make every moment a teach you about me moment instead of a tell you about you moment. Say it again. Make every moment a teach you about, about me moment teach you about me moment instead of a tell you about you moment. In other words, whenever you are confronting a situation that uh, is regarding something that affected you, don't make this a time when you want to tell me off. You want to tell me about myself and what I didn't do, what I need to do, what I've always done, all that kind of stuff. Approach it from this perspective. The other day, you and I were on the phone having a discussion. And there were some things that you said. And I respect what you said. I'm not negating what you said. I'm not negating your feelings about any of those things. I just want to tell you how I felt about it. And how I'm beginning to see some things about myself. And how certain things that are said or done. I react to them. And sometimes don't realize how I'm reacting to them. And you begin to tell the person about how that behavior affected you. And you may not know at the time of this disclosure what the core of it is. But the person that you're saying this to may very well begin to, one, identify with you. Because they may experience the same thing. Two, they may begin to take a look at how their reaction to your reaction may have been inappropriate. Because maybe they really didn't hear what they were saying, uh, what was being said, or what they said. 
So now it becomes more of a reflective listening relationship. But did I, so do I understand you to mean this? Or do I understand you to mean that? Or, you know, so I'm clear on what it is that you're saying. Let me, let me ask it again. They will also begin to see how maybe as a person who was or is your partner that they need to be more understanding of who you are. So it's a teach you about me moment, not a tell you about you moment, which opens the door to a more improved level of communication between the two of us. Everything doesn't have to be a fight. And if you're approaching every circumstance with the person that you are parting ways from, or have parted ways from, it's going to be the same outcome. It's going to be the same outcome. It's going to always be an ongoing, knockdown, drag out circumstance. And you'll come away from it drained, but no resolve. No resolve. None. And the reason that happens is, is because uh, I think the term, the, the term that's used is, is rubber banding. Uh, and they use this, you'll hear this used in, in psych, psychiatry, pretty much psychology. Um, that during certain experiences throughout the course of our life, we do what's called rubber banding. We will go, we will be faced with a circumstance, and then right in the midst of that circumstance, we will, we will regress to a certain point of our life where this situation happened before. And emotionally, we will reattach to that and we will have those feelings all over again just like it's taking place right now. Just like it's taking place right now. And depending on where we are in our minds and how we perceive this person, how we perceive this circumstance, where we're at in the world at that time will truly determine how we're going to react right now. It's, it's going to determine that. And again, I, I want to remind everyone that we minimize the, the beauty of the human being and what the human being is capable of doing without our permission. It does it automatically. It does things automatically. It just happens that way. When you sit and you listen to uh, music, I want you to take a look at the songs that you hear that make your eyes well up or make you misty-eyed or make you angry. I want you to do that today. And I want you to write down the song and I want you to find the lyrics, because most of the lyrics you can find online, or listen to the song repeatedly and take yourself back to that point of your life where you heard that music. Then you'll begin to uh, start understanding trauma. This stuff is really deep, man. And then right in the midst of all of this, we have the child. I, I, I can't say this enough. Take a look at you before you start taking a look at other people and judging them for where they're at because you really don't know where most people are at because a lot of times we don't present that person. We present a representative because we're protecting ourselves. Not because we're trying to deny you to know who we are. Which it's, just, it's a protective mechanism. Again, I thank you for joining me at Soft Spot. Have a wonderful and blessed day. Peace. See you next Friday.